assurance that the public needed so desperately came instead from some accidental heroes. Like John Phelan, the streetwise trader who ran the New York Stock Exchange. Phelan, an ex-Marine who had faced hostile fire in Korea, held the first ever live press conference from the New York Stock Exchange on the afternoon of Black Monday. And his calm humor and steady command of the facts helped greatly to reassure Wall Street and stave off further panic. Federal Reserve Chairman, looking very young and sprightly there, Alan Greenspan, had been in office barely 10 weeks on Black Monday. But he immediately did the right thing. He announced the Fed would fulfill its duty to be the lender of last resort in this crisis. He would make sure banks like Continental Illinois had enough money to lend. But would they lend? to cash-strapped financial institutions in the middle of this unprecedented crash. New York Federal Reserve Bank Chairman Jerry Corrigan was the man who persuaded a nation of terrified big city bankers to actually make those loans, restoring a flow of credit to Wall Street firms and almost certainly preventing widespread defaults. So forget all those hazy memories of a brief but spectacular Black Monday. We actually survived this protracted crisis by the skin of our teeth. It was a crisis that almost cracked our financial system, and we need to remember that. So we will understand how crucial it is to see what that terrible crash was trying to teach us. For one thing, it was clear in the aftermath of all this drama that the long-cherished financial theory that markets are rational and efficient was, to put it mildly, absurd. There were a lot of words that people applied to the markets in and around Black Monday, but rational and efficient were not among them. Equally absurd was the stubbornly popular corollary to that belief in, ma in rational markets, which is that these efficient markets can regulate themselves better if Uncle Sam just leaves them alone. Deregulating financial markets, in my opinion, makes about as much sense as deregulating rush hour traffic at high speed. Without sensible rules, it's just a race to the bottom. But even with sensible rules, we need cool leadership for men like Jerry Corrigan and John Phelan in Washington and on Wall Street, people who can keep their heads and improvise quickly when panic strikes. Because you can't deal with a crisis by fighting the last war. Each crisis will challenge you with new and novel problems. The key figures in the 1987 crash truly were characters that a novelist might have created and, in fact, might have envied. I loved collecting their stories. But the individuals I follow in my book also represent larger forces that were radically changing our financial lives in the 1980s. I track the experiences of two fascinating pension fund managers. The head of the GM pension fund, the largest corporate fund in the world at the time, and the manager of New Jersey's public retirement system. Now, they're fascinating characters in their own right, but I follow them because the influx of giant pension funds and other market titans into the stock market was a genuinely new thing, one that continues to affect markets to this day. I'll introduce you to some young finance professors in Berkeley who had this genius idea that, that just went viral on Wall Street called portfolio insurance, an esoteric computer strategy for hedging the risks in your stock portfolio, a strategy that backfired disastrously and taught us a lot about the enormous gap between academic theories of finance and human emotions around the money. Computer-driven trading, embraced on a huge scale by institutional giants, was also new and was going viral in the early 1980s, with little appreciation of the dramatic effect it would have on market machinery, the gears, the cogs. Giant traders had also embraced the use of new, untested stock market derivatives like those stock index futures in, in Chicago, 
which had not even existed until 1982 and therefore had never been subject to the stress test of a sharp market panic. Meanwhile, a fragmented regulatory system in Washington was straining desperately to understand this brave new world and figure out how to regulate it. And some of those harried and heroic regulators are part of my story too. Those factors were what made Black Monday so different from ever, every major crisis that had come before and so similar to every major crisis we have coped with ever since. Let's consider. The 1987 crash was marked by weird derivatives that blew up, brilliant strategies that didn't work, supersized investors on the brink of panic, computerized herd-like trading that fed the chaos, and regulators that were blindsided from every angle. And the 2008 crisis? Oh, well, it was marked by weird derivatives that blew up, brilliant strategies that didn't work, supersized investors on the brink of panic, computerized herd-like trading strategies that fed the chaos, and regulators who were blindsided by every angle. In short, the 1987 crash showed us the future, this future. The financial world we must navigate today, the turbulent landscape we've been stumbling through in the past month and even into today. I have a uh, well-timed show and tell. My uh, immense thanks to the Wall Street Journal for running this headline yesterday. It says, investors discern parallels to 87 market. Well, yes. <laughs> Duh. On Black Monday, it became blindingly clear that Wall Street was no longer a mom and pop world with separate silos where different groups of investors traded stocks here and bonds here and derivatives over there. It was and had been for years one gigantic marketplace where the same too big to fail investors traded everything at breakneck speed all the time and most alarmingly, at the same time. We learned on that day that we were all in the same boat with those titans, and if they all decided to run over to the same side of the boat at the same time, we would capsize, unless regulators could find some way to steady the ship. Well, they didn't. We got lucky in 87. But as we've seen in some recent free fall market drops, they still haven't. In 2008, precisely the same risk factors that nearly broke the system in 1987 were once again involved, but at exponentially more dangerous levels. Not only had we not addressed the risks exposed by Black Monday, but over 30 years we had let them get far, far worse. Today, just two Titan money management firms, Vanguard and BlackRock together, manage $10 trillion. Two firms, $10 trillion. That is a figure that would have sent regulators and Wall Street investors in 1987 screaming from the room. Yet, here we are. Most glaringly, because it's something over which we have as citizens more control, we still don't have a regulatory system built for this unified, lightning fast, supersized marketplace. Instead, we're using the same 1930s Rube Goldberg machine that left investors blindsided almost 30 years ago. After the 87 crash, a blue ribbon panel led by Republican uh, Nicholas Brady, a former New Jersey senator and a future Treasury Secretary, advised President Reagan at, at this meeting in the Oval Office that this fragmented approach to regulating a new, newly unified marketplace was outdated and dangerous. But nothing was done. After 2008, exactly the same warnings, in almost exactly the same words, were made by Republican officials testifying before Congress. The regulatory system was balkanized, fragmented, they said. Nobody could see the whole 360-degree picture and respond before a threat got out of control. And that needed to change. It didn't. 
We, finally in October, just in time for the 30th anniversary of Black Monday, the Trump administration's GOP-led Treasury Department released a new assessment of the U.S. capital markets, and sure enough, right there on page 9 and 10 of the executive summary, it concluded that overlapping mandates and jurisdictional friction in a fragmented regulatory system were among the significant challenges confronting our markets today. But instead of actually recommending laws to fix that, it merely called for more harmonization between rival agencies that, as you will see in a first-class catastrophe, have fought like cats and dogs for decades. They're at loggerheads right now over how to regulate cyber currencies like Bitcoin. So it's not clear to me how they're so supposed to suddenly become harmonious partners solving far more intractable differences over regulatory turf and political control. Now, I'm not suggesting by focusing on Washington regulation that there's a regulatory fix that will somehow keep the value of IRA, our IRAs and 401ks from ever going down. If there were such a regulatory fix, even this fractured Congress would have it passed by tomorrow afternoon. But I am suggesting that market amnesia and political gridlock have combined to leave us just as vulnerable to a major market breakdown today as we were on Black Monday. A breakdown in which the market doesn't just fall, it falls apart. Well, what do we do? I'm not an investment advisor. I will say that again on the record. I am not an investment advisor. I'm just a financial writer and amateur financial historian. But one thing I learned from writing this book is that in today's market, I'm just the mouse on the elephant's dance floor. So are you. If they start to panic and run for the exits, there we are, I'm going to try to stay calm, stand pat, and get out of the way until the dust settles. And if I couldn't afford to wait for the dust to settle, I would be very cautious about how much I invested in markets that are prone to fluctuate sometimes by very large amounts, very quickly, and always without warning. So perhaps it's too rosy and optimistic, but I think we need a little rosy optimism right now. I very much hope that readers of a first-class catastrophe will finally recognize how important it is that Black Monday regain a prominent and accurate place in our collective memory as a nation. We need to remember what went wrong and how close we came to disaster. Only then can we start factoring those structural risks into our personal and political decisions. Once the lessons of Black Monday are learned, I hope that informed citizens like you can demand that Washington start some intelligent discussion about meaningful wall-to-wall -wall reform. You know that threadbare but profoundly accurate cliche, those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. It is essential that we discard our mistaken, romantic myths about how modern markets really work. Only then will we be able to safely navigate the turbulent financial world of today and tomorrow.